Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Chris here back with another tea talk. Um, still getting over COVID, so I might have to take some deep breaths or cough a little through this video, so I apologize for that. But uh, let's get right into it. Um, I'm drinking a premium sencha from uh, Saitama Prefecture today. Um, it's called Sui Ren, which means uh, water lily in Japanese. Um, so apparently the producer is a big fan of French poetry and apparently some poem mentions water lily. Uh, so he named uh, the, the tea after that. And the tea comes from uh, the Sayama region of Saitama Prefecture, which is, um, you know, sort of an up and coming uh, tea producing area. Um, they play around with uh, cultivars a lot. Um, so some of the stuff is pretty wacky and out there, and some of it is pretty traditionally made. Um, and Saitama also produces a lot of Japanese black tea that I've gotten to try, and I really enjoy uh, black tea from Saitama. Um, but uh, if you're not familiar with the area, um, think of Sa uh, Tokyo as New York City and Saitama as New Jersey or Long Island. <coughs> So, um, Saitama is like a commuter area, right? So, uh, you would work in Tokyo and live in Saitama usually, um, just like you would work in New York and live in New Jersey or Long Island. So a lot of my friends from New Jersey don't like that comparison, but, uh, New York is better. So, uh, ha ha. <laughs> um, but the reason I uh, bring that up or about the region is because it is uh, more northerly than usual. So it produces larger leaves compared to other areas of uh, tea production in Japan. <clears throat> but the reason I chose this uh, tea was for the packaging. So you'll see this symbol here. Um, and what that is, is a family crest. It's a, what they call a kamun in Japanese. Um, and it's very similar to, you know, a coat of arms in European culture. Um, but it has a lot more functions um, or opportunities to be displayed compared to a coat of arms. You know, I have a coat of arms in my house uh, for my uh, displaying my Irish uh, roots, sort of. Um, and it just kind of sits on the wall where this can be displayed in multiple ways. So in samurai times, the warlord will usually have his kamon uh, printed on his breastplate of his samurai armor. Um, and sometimes you'll have like fancy plates with your family crest on it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and in, in traditional Japanese weddings, the men wear black kimono tops and they would have uh, their family crest uh, embroidered onto their shoulders, um, of, uh, like of the kimono top. Um, so if, even if you're a foreign guy marrying a Japanese woman and you have a Japanese style wedding, you would usually wear your in-laws, uh, kamon on your, on your kimono, which I think is pretty cool. You know, you're sort of adopted into a new family. Um, another group that uses kamon a lot are Yakuza groups. Um, so each group would have their own distinct crest uh, that will be displayed um, on business cards and on buildings. <coughs> so, excuse me. Um, so a st I won't get into it in too much detail now. It's a story for another video maybe, uh, but I accidentally walked into the headquarters of a Yakuza group when I was living in Osaka. And after I made my mistake, I uh, quickly exited the building and I noticed that there was a big uh, kamon displayed on uh, right near the door there, um, which I should have seen, <laughs> but uh, nothing bad happened. I just quickly left and uh, you know apologized. Um, but yeah, that's a story for a different video. But this kamon in particular is called a Takunoha um, kamon, which means uh, hawk feather. 
And this one in like specifically is called a Maruni Chigai Takunoha, which just means crossed hawk feather in a circle. Um, <coughs> and the uh, Takunoha um, Kamon is most associated with the Asano clan or Asano Shi in Japanese history. Um, so there's a couple different branches of the Asano clan. One of them was in the Owari province, um, which was uh, like Aichi prefecture or like near Nagoya. Um, and the ruler of uh, Owari used to be Oda Nobunaga. So in the last video, I think I talked a little bit, little bit about Nobunaga. Um, he was the great unifier of Japan in the Warring States period of the 1500s. Um, <clears throat> and his successor was Toyotomi Hideyoshi, uh, who further unified Japan under his, his command um, in the later half of the 1500s. Um, but Toyotomi Hideyoshi's brother-in-law was a guy named Asano Nagamasa, uh, who the Asano clan used that, that family crest. Um, but Nagamasa's sister, uh, the lady Nene or Nene Dono was married to Hideyoshi and they were actually like madly in love. Um, so if you think about medieval marriages or arranged marriages in general, um, it's more for political gain or there's something more uh, behind the scenes going on. Um, but apparently Hideyoshi and Nene were like actually in love. So that's kind of a cool story. Um, and another branch of the Asano clan was located in Ako Domain or Ako Province in Western Hyogo. So think about like around Himeji City. Um, and one of the lords of the Asano clan in there was Asano Naganori, who's most known from the story of the 47 Ronin. So um, Asano Naganori was unjustly made to commit ritual su suicide or seppuku by a guy named Kira, who was his rival. And uh, so after Asano died, 47 of his vassals or his, you know, samurai um, plotted to avenge his death by killing Kira. And that became the story of the 47 Ronin. Um, they made a movie about it with Keanu Reeves a couple years ago, which was supposedly good, but I never saw it. Um, but, uh, Let's have some tea. So this, is, they say it's a sencha, but it's shaded for about a week. Um, so it's almost like a kabusecha. Uh, I don't know why they choose to market it as a sencha versus a kabusecha, but that's how they, that's how they market it. So um, let's, uh, let's uh, give it a, give it a world whirl sorry um but since it is shaded it should have a dark green color and have more of a um maybe a stronger grassy taste than than some of the teas we've tried uh in the past um just a couple more seconds here um but let's see this is the second steep of the tea so it should give more of a true flavor yeah so it is a dark green um color which is like like a kabusecha or a deeply steamed uh tea and uh let's give it a try Yeah, so I was right. Lots of grassy notes. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to continue drinking this. And uh, I hope you enjoyed some of the historical facts and um, the Japanese culture stuff. Uh, you guys seem to be liking that. Uh, you tell me that on, on Instagram. So I'm going to keep posting these. And uh, let's see what happens. Uh, catch you next time. Take care.